there i hope you're all well today i just wanted to have a close little chat about fear of failure and perfectionism those are issues that i have struggled with a lot in my creative journey especially in the beginning and it took me a good couple of years before i even dare to call myself a creative to do any creative work sustainably not just in short little bursts here and there so yeah, it's an issue that I think is really important to talk about and to deal with if that's something that you struggle with. So I have prepared a nice cup of tea and let's go upstairs and talk in the little armchair. So yeah, let's do it! <laughs> is apparently gonna be with us today as well. She was in my last video and I think she enjoyed it so much that she decided she's just gonna be here. <laughs> but we don't mind that, no we don't. So yeah, my creative journey began when I was trying to write my first novel. So I was the kind of kid who loved to read, I loved stories, I loved fiction. And I very early began that dream of writing my own books, writing fiction. And becoming an author so when i was at the university i decided that okay we're gonna give this a try i want to become an author so i should start writing my first book and i struggled really bad <laughs> i remember having a notebook that i started to write in uh, trying to start writing a story and maybe getting a couple of sentences down but being so completely hung up on having it be really good and hating everything I wrote. So yeah, I really struggled. I joined uh, NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, uh, where you're supposed to write 50,000 words in a month. Uh, and I did do that, I did manage that, but as soon as it was over, I just quit and didn't look at what I've written and didn't write anything more. So I think that worked because then I was going at such speed that I didn't stop and think and feel and just onward, onward, onward. And that worked short term, but it didn't work long term. It really didn't. And the things that I wrote didn't turn out very well either because I just wrote, wrote, wrote um, and didn't sort of sit back and think because if I would sit back and think, I knew I was going to feel bad about it and I would feel not good enough and like my ideas were bad and I was so scared of that feeling because I was really really scared of failing I had that dream of being a fiction author for so long and when when at school and you're sort of deciding what you're gonna spend your future on future doing what you're gonna educate yourself in there's always that pressure that you have to choose something that is going to make money and uh, I always got this sense from from grown-ups talking that if you uh, want to write a book it's going to be so competitive you have to be the best to even have a chance so I had that dream of becoming an author but I knew that the stakes were so high I know, knew it was so hard to get published I knew it was hard to make any money from it and I really wanted to be an author and so I was really scared of, of failing at it I was so scared that I wouldn't manage it I wouldn't make the cut and become published so that was sort of my starting point <laughs> that I had to write something really, really good uh, to, yeah, because if I didn't, I wouldn't manage to fulfill my dream. So yeah, that wasn't a very good starting point. <laughs> it sparked a lot of perfectionism. Okay, bye bye Alice. It sparked a lot of perfectionism and everything I wrote had to be good because if it wasn't good, I was gonna be a failure at my big long-term childhood dream of becoming an author so yeah uh, so this went on for a couple of years uh, me trying to write a novel and not managing to do it very well getting words out but yeah it, I went into writer's block again and again and again so yeah 
finally, when I, I had left university at that point and was working, uh, working my first job after university, uh, or second job maybe, uh, and then I had this sense that, okay, this is a real problem and I was spending a lot of time with working since I was working full time and to try to write something when you're that scared of, of failing uh, sort of in your spare time can be really hard because it's so easy to procrastinate when you have little time. So that then I decided that okay this is a problem and I need to deal with it. So what I did was that in 2016 I decided to face my creative fears and I decided that 2016 would be what I called my fear year and that's how I started blogging. So my first year of blogging was journaling and, and sort of, what do you call it? Sharing. <laughs> sharing my, my fear year journey during 2016 and sharing what I learned uh, from it as well. So yeah, that's how I got into the creative mindsets, the creative process, because I realized that it wasn't just uh, that I needed to learn how to write a novel in a good way. I needed to learn how to manage the creative process, to manage uh, to get good creative mindsets, because that, that's such a big part of it. It's not just to be able to write good characters or, or something like that is so much about the mindset as well. So yeah, that's what I discovered in 2016. So what then happened was that I spent one year on doing things that scared me creatively. So just starting to blog was very scary. <laughs> It was something that I was scared of doing because I was scared of sharing what I wrote. Uh, and because I had that perfectionism and wanted it to be good, and I wanted other people to find it good, but I was very much my own uh, hardest critic. And yeah, just to write and write and share as I went and to not obsess over one piece of content. That really actually helped me to write and just move on and to, to do my best, but then also move forward and just try to be, do better next time and improve as I went. So yeah, I did a couple of other things. I started to paint for a while uh, and then stopped <laughs> uh, after the year was over because that was something Everything sort of visual creativity wise uh, was something that I found scary back then. Um, I had never viewed myself as a visual creative. It was always the words and the ideas that sort of where I found my strengths. But yeah, I had to design my own website and I painted for a bit and did those things and then explored photography, which felt a little bit less scary because I had been doing that a little, um, but yeah. So those were the things that I did. I spent one year on, on facing fears and that really helped me to sort of start getting better mindsets around how to deal with fear of failure and how to deal with perfectionism and just being able to actually move forward with my projects and not being completely stuck and, and frozen by the things that scared me. So yeah, that's what I did. And now last year, I, I finally finished that novel that I have been writing for many years. And sort of, it went through many different um, evolutions. It's not the same book that it was from the beginning because this was really the novel that taught me how to sort of write a novel. And if you haven't followed me uh, before, you, you don't know this, but it's with publishers. Uh, so I have pitched it to publishers and no one has said yes yet. So in a sense, I, I have, I'm, in a sense, I'm at that space in time that I feared so much that publishers would reject uh, my novel and wouldn't sort of let me into the cool kids club. Um, so yeah, that was always what, what I was so scared of. And to be honest, of course, I want the book to get published. But if it doesn't get published, well, so be it. I 
am thinking about the next novel that I will write and I know that there are many authors who didn't get published with their first attempt but in later attempts they did so I'm not fretting so much about it um, and I know <laughs> I know that that's a very big difference from where I was. So I wanted to share a couple of things, a couple of tools that I picked up during this year of facing my fears and what I sort of understood about doing so and, and facing creative fears. that I picked up during my year of facing creative fears was something that I talked about in my video about setting goals as well and it's the focus more on the joy of the process than a certain outcome or result. So when you are fear, fearing a, a failure in your process then you are fearing a certain outcome, a certain result and not getting the results that you want. So there, there's that certain obsession with okay the point of this journey is to get a certain outcome and if we shift that focus over to enjoying the process having fun in the process it's going to be so much easier to move forward and it's also going to here's the thing uh, it's also going to help you get to the good results because when we are stuck in perfectionism we are holding ourselves back from moving forward because we are saying that only a good outcome is acceptable. But the way to a good outcome is also to be open for the bad outcomes and to make mistakes along the journey and to do things that aren't so great. Uh, so I had to be okay with my novel not being a good novel. I, would, I had to be okay with writing a bad novel to even have the possibility of writing a good one. tool that I picked up during this year is something that I like to call draft by draft and it's very obvious in writing because you are writing one draft and things doesn't have to be turn out perfectly in that draft because you'll write another draft and you can fix the things uh, that didn't turn out great but I think this can be applied to many different creative endeavors so for example now that I am building a creative business I can think of my business as, okay, this is the current draft and if that doesn't work out really well, then I can change things into the new draft, for example. Or in photography, if a photo doesn't turn out great, then you take another photo and you can learn sort of over time and improve over time. And the third tool that I have picked up is simply to let fear be along for the ride. And this is something that was a big mindset shift when I did this fear year. And it's instead of trying to run away from fear, to just let it be there and move through it and even move towards it and do the things that found, I found scary. Turned. <laughs> so what I learned through dealing with all of this is that we really don't have to be fearless to do things. We, we can be little scaredy cats and manage to do things anyway. It's just a matter of good processes and good mindsets and being aware of exactly what's happening, that it's actually fear that's going on and allowing it to be there and find our way through it. And we can all do it even if we are feeling scared. So yeah, it's just finding your way and finding the tools to help you to do it. And what I have sort of landed on is that I don't want 
fears to stand in the way of doing things that I want to do, of my creative dreams. And yeah, I just simply don't want to be the person who lets the fear stop her from, from doing what I want to do. So that is what I'm always sort of thinking about when I'm pondering things for the future in my creative journey. Things that I want to do but makes me feel uncomfortable. So this year with growing my creative business, there are definitely things that I know will challenge me. There's one thing in particular that I know will make me make all those fear of failure feelings rise up again. And yeah, I won't tell you exactly what it is right now, but I will share it quite soon. That is my story, my background with fear of failure and the tools I picked up along the way. I will leave a link to my fear year journey if you want to read more about it. And yeah, that is what I wanted to share about it. So I hope you have a great rest of the day. Give a little like to this video if you enjoyed it. If you're new here, hello and subscribe to this channel for more tips about moving forward in your pretty work and living with more intention, intention and flow. <laughs> so yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye!